somehow Palpatine returned. The Billion tell me to protect them. What if they get sick? Well, Danny kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet and the Iron Fleet. Hey, story fans, it's your old pal, the writing ref. Don't hate, I just officiate. Today we'll be starting a new series called Heavily Penalized, where I take a common writing penalty that I see happen over and over again, which holds stories back. And I'll go over several examples of the penalty and how to correct it. This Heavily Penalized series will be a four-part series on how many times I've seen stories get the superhero alter ego incorrect. If you disagree with anything I say, make sure to comment, throw the red flag, and we'll go to the review booth review. Also, like and subscribe if you like this series to make sure you get every entry. In 1903, in a small theater in Nottingham, England, a stage play opened, which would launch a new mythology into the mind of popular culture. Set early in the stages of the French Revolution in 1792, the play is about a daring English swordsman who rescues individuals sentenced to death by the guillotine. Who is this man that risks so much for us? That, sir, is the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yes, the Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Emma Orksey. A play where the hero is a master of disguise, an imaginative planner, and a quick-thinking escape artist. To hide his true identity as the Scarlet Pimpernel, Sir Percy Blakeney presents himself in everyday life as a dim-witted, foppish playboy. Sound familiar? They seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenches seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Or is he in hell? That damn, elusive Pimpernel. <laughs> the Shadow. Batman, Zorro, and even Superman all take inspiration from the Scarlet Pimpernel. Superheroes would not only capture the imagination of popular culture, they would time and again find ways to break or even reverse the patterns of classical mythology. A potential Hercules could live and hide as a regular man rather than have his family slumber. Prometheus might escape his punishment from the gods by disguising himself. In the past, disguising yourself had been immoral, something for trickster gods like Loki, or even like Zeus, who once transformed himself into a bull to seduce a woman. Well, now it's heroic. In this new mythology, the hero's journey now includes a conflict created by attempting to find a balance between the ego and the alter ego. Many authors, from those seeking to debut to big-budget, million-dollar modern superhero movies, get this conflict terribly wrong. This heavily penalized series will look at the right way and the wrong way to create a juxtaposition between the hero and his alter ego, and there is no one better to begin with than the last son of Krypton, Superman. The alter ego of Superman is Clark Kent. Ask anyone on the street what Clark Kent is supposed to act like, and they'll tell you kind of bumbles, kind of nerdy, but the word I use is meek. The only actor in the last 30 years to get a chance to play Clark Kent meekly has been Brandon Routh. Routh's first chance to down the cape was in Superman Returns, where he was basically a continuation of the Richard Donner Superman. But he got a chance again recently in the CW's Crisis on Infinite Earths to play a version of Clark who is more like the Kingdom Come Superman. Every other Clark in the last 30 years has not been meek. Quite the opposite, from Tom Welling's Clark in Smallville, to Dean Cain back in 1992 for Lois and Clark, and even the new CW Superman as a confident, intrepid reporter, Sexy Clark. While this reflects something that's going on in society, we're going to focus on the main movie star Superman, Henry Cain.
So then. Let me put You're it calling in. it an anomalous object, whatever that means. Back off, Lepo. I'm serious. Oh, come on, Chrissy. Knock it off. In 2013's Man of Steel, we meet up with Clark as an adult, wandering around as a vagabond, looking for something. For what? He anonymously saves people, but he doesn't reveal himself, so he doesn't have a dual identity yet. And yet, he's still supposed to be hiding his powers. By the time we get to this scene, we wonder, where is the meat Clark? And it seems like this is the best we're going to get, and it's pretty good, because he's humble and chooses to walk away and not fight back. It's not worth it, sweetie. Oops, so much for that. But I'm not ready to throw the penalty flag yet. Because as we get to the end of the movie, after all the destruction, after everything that people may complain about with Man of Steel, they give us this look at Clark, establishing himself really for the first time. And you think to yourself, Maybe, Adolf, maybe, maybe Zack Snyder and his writers have found a way to blend the intrepid reporter with the meat clerk. Cavill plays it here. Like, maybe that's coming. Welcome to the planet. Glad to be here, Lois. This bat and then, a couple years later, we get to Batman and v Superman, and, adjacent projects and there's no meekness to be found in Clark at all. He goes after his boss, in Gotham. he wants to find out about the Batman, Water. and when? nothing is going to stand in his way, and he's going to let everyone know that's his personality. This? Poor people don't buy papers? <laughs> people don't buy papers, period, Ken. Perry, when you assign a story, you're making a choice about who matters. And who's worth it. Good morning. Henry Cavill in an interview said that he was playing the comic American book version Clark of Clark, and he's not wrong. With Robert As I pointed out, for the past 30 years, Clark. most Clarks have been pretty confident, no match. pretty sexy. My guys in the crime lab the problem with this is that all the jokes about it's called a Clark Kent just being a guy with glasses and why nobody notices the he's Superman in the desert. become a lot more, commercially in the world, I guess, even pointed. So? so who gave... But there's something else, rounds to targ fighters in the a mythology that's missing, tell me. I think that the US government and we'll talk about it by showing Christopher Reeve's example. But first, Ask Lois. I gotta blow the whistle. <laughs> Holding on the writers of the Snyderverse, improper use of superhero alter ego. Knocking? In this scene, you're about to see uh, Lois, the perfect we, uh, juxtaposition of meekness to Superman. But no, meekness isn't merely an important part of the disguise. And no, Bill's speech about Superman and Kill Bill Part 2 is not correct either. Clark is not how Superman sees or critiques humanity. Rather, Kal-El knows this is how humanity sees itself. Deep down, we all struggle with our imperfections. We're goofballs, weaklings, unsure of ourselves. Confidence comes with practice even for the most skilled extrovert. We all face the struggle to be accepted. Clark Kent isn't simply a mask. It's a declaration Lois, that Superman knows what we are going through. There's something I have to tell you. That a godlike being really... knows what us mortals face every day. Uh, I mean, and I when he dons not, the red cape, first, we know he is someone to be trusted. A friend. Uh, but then I decided, well, darn it, I was gonna show you the fact of your life. And there you have it. That's part one of Heavily Penalized, a series on the superhero alter ego, how we keep getting it wrong. In about a year's time, we're going to have another Superman, Superman Legacy by James Gunn. And when that Clark Kent enters the screen, it's a, <laughs> he's kind of bumbling a little bit like this and souched. And we'll know we're on the right track to a good mythology. But if you're confident and you're sexy, better watch out, because we're still missing something important. Until next time, when I review Shazam and what we get right and wrong about our current iterations of that franchise, I've been the writing man, Travis Hightower. We'll see you next time.